Hello, welcome to this TTK tutorial. In this video, I'm going to show you how to reproduce one of the examples shown in the gallery section of the TTK website. So uh, let's go there. In particular, I will show you how to reproduce the uncertain starting vortex demo right at the bottom here, this guy. So for this, you will first need to open a terminal like uh, I did here. Okay. And here I will assume that you downloaded and decompress the TTK source code and data tarples to uh, this directory here, like this. And of course that you successfully installed TTK. So now we'll move to uh, the TTK uh, data directory, okay, and we'll uh, run the following command parview dash dash state equals states uncertain starting vortex dot pvsm and we'll hit the key enter and this will uh, launch uh, the demo. Okay, so here we are. So what this demo is showing is um, some uncertain scalar field some realizations of this uncertain scale field and their critical points and mandatory critical point predictions. And I will now explain uh, everything in there. So um, the example that we consider here is a typical um, computational fluid dynamic example in two dimensions where you have some flow that comes from the left, you have an obstacle here and a vortex that starts to appear here on the right. Okay, and here uh, the scalar field that we're considering is the actual norm of the velocity uh, vector field. Okay, so here in this case, uh, we uh, are dealing with some uncertain data. So this means that for each vertex of the domain, we no longer have a uh, single value, but an interval of possible values. And we don't know exactly what's the value taken by the vertex. We just know that it lives in this interval. We can have a look at this interval together here, so let me uh, remove this. So here, the input data is uh, this image, and it has two scalar fields for each point, which describe the lower bound of this interval and the upper bound of this interval. So we can display the width of this interval to have an idea of the uh, location of the uncertainty. So for this, uh, I will call the calculator. So you can either call the calculator from the filters menu here with alphabetical, or you can search uh, for it, which is faster. You can actually uh, use the keystroke control and spacebar under Linux to have the search menu. And here I'll type calculator. Okay. And here I will call this uncertainty. And I will just look at the width of the interval for each point. Okay, so I will adjust a bit uh, the transfer function, like this, like that, okay. So here is uh, the distribution of the uncertainty on the data. So what is interesting is that we have a very high uncertainty behind the obstacle, especially where uh, the vortex um, appears. Okay. So I will uh, remove this and show this instead. Okay. So in order to still be able to uh, do some topological analysis of this uncertain data, uh, TTK implements an algorithm that is called mandatory critical points. And actually what this algorithm does is that it extra extracts those regions that you see in blue and green. And what those me regions means is that if you take uh, a realization of your data. So if you take an arbitrary function that lives in between the lower bound and the upper bound, another way to say this is if you uh, roll the dice for each vertex and take a random value in between uh, the lower bound and the upper bound, you will get a realization function if you do this for all the vertices of the, of the data. And once you've done this, those region in light blue and light green actually correspond to mandatory critical points. 
These are regions where you are guaranteed that you will have at least one critical point in all of the possible realizations that you can generate. So for instance, one way to understand this is that in this green region, however you roll the dice to uh, generate a realization function, you have the guarantee that there will be at least one maximum in this region. So you don't necessarily know how many you will have, neither um, uh, where they're going to be located, you just know that there's at least one and that it lives in this region here. Okay. Uh, so this is exactly what this uh, demo is trying to confirm. So basically, uh, given the uncertain data, we generated uh, some um, realization functions. So for each vertex of the domain, we uh, um, took a random value in the interval uh, that is admissible. And then we looked at the uh, topology of this realization. So up top, you see here one realization and you see uh, its persistence diagram here on the right. And I explained in previous tutorials what this uh, diagram was. Uh, it shows the uh, distribution of the pairs of critical points of your scalar field. Okay, and we can have a look at the actual scal um, critical points uh, for this uh, observation. And as predicted by the uh, algorithm, there is indeed one uh, maximum here that lives in this region and here one in this one and a minimum in this region exactly at the vortex. At the bottom we did exactly the same thing uh, but with a different function. We rolled the dice uh, again so the function is slightly different. The persistence diagram as you can see is slightly different too and the location of the critical points and the number is slightly different too. And what is interesting to see is that the region, the predicted region is still valid. Um, the critical points moved, but still in the predicted region by the mandatory critical point algorithm. Okay, so now I will uh, show you how to uh, reproduce this example from scratch. So let's close this. Let's clear this and call par view on the uncertain starting vortex of PTI. Okay. It will load and here. The first thing we're going to do is that we're going to compute the mandatory structure here. And we'll say that the upper band is the upper band here like this and apply. All right, so this uh, plugin is computing many things that we uh, don't necessarily need for uh, the purpose of this demo. So we'll just select the things that we want and here uh, we show this guy with a particular color map. Let's say this one, which is better. Okay, and now we'll take the mandatory minima extracted with the algorithm. And we'll threshold this. And we'll take uh, all the non negative components, which are here, and I show them with the distinct color, like this one, for instance. Perfect. And I do the same for the maxima. Nice. Okay. And I'll put this with a unique color. This guy, for instance. Okay. So pretty much like uh, previous topological representation, we can uh, simplify this a bit to remove the small uh, oscillations like this. Okay. So what we want to do now is that we want to make sure that if we roll the dice and generate a realization function, we indeed uh, have critical points that leave in those uh, predicted regions. So for this, we'll take uh, the calculator. We'll take first a uh, random attributes to roll the dice. We'll take a double value in between 0 and 1 and we'll generate some uh, generate point vectors like this. Okay, now we'll uh, have a look at the calculator. We'll call this realization 0. We'll say that we want uh, this to be equal to the lower bound plus 
our random value multiplied by the upper bound minus the uh, lower bound. So basically we want to take random value in the admissible interval. And there we go, this is exactly what we did. So now we may want to have a look at the uh, persistence diagram of this thing. Uh, like this. If you want to have a 2D view, and we'll call it persistence uh, diagram. And uh, we'll proceed. Okay, and here we are. So we may want to enrich the visualization of this thing a bit. We want to edit the titles of the, of the axes here. And uh, at this point, we may want to improve the visualization of this guy. So uh, we'll uh, take the uh, negative identifier, which is the diagonal. We'll apply a surface and then a tube like this to put the diagonal with a specific color. Next, we'll take uh, the complement of this, take the non-negative values here, which are the persistence pairs. Okay. And uh, we'll consider only uh, the most uh, persistent features in here, so we'll take a tiny epsilon uh, threshold to simplify the persistence diagram, and we'll take only uh, those uh, pairs of critical points uh, whose persistence is larger than this threshold. Okay. And now we'll put some spheres, probably of this size, okay, smaller, like this, and we'll color, their, color, color them by type. Dark green is a maximum, uh, dark blue is a minimum, dark, uh, light blue is a joint saddle, and light green is a split saddle. So then, uh, I will change this into a persistence threshold. Okay. And this I want to represent uh, with a tube. And uh, wait, uh, like this. All right. So now uh, we want to see where those critical points live in the original domain. And uh, in particular, since we did some simplification of the persistence diagram, we want to simplify the function uh, to conform to this uh, persistence diagram. So for this, we'll select the persistence threshold in this view, and uh, we'll call uh, the topological simplification. We'll say that the actual data that we want to simplify is uh, the calculator, where we generated our uh, realization, and the constraints are actually the persistence threshold here. We'll click on OK, and here you want to make sure that you select uh, vertex identifier here, and you click on OK. And there we go, we simplify the function, we can compute the, some critical points on it. And here you want to make sure that you check this box to make sure that the scala field critical point understands uh, the simplification that's been done before. Let's click on Apply. And here we'll put some spheres with a small resolution because I suspect we'll have many of these. And much smaller. Much smaller. Much smaller. Okay. And we can put 12, let's say. Okay, and there. They want to change uh, the color map a bit. Change this and zero. We put this guy to black here. Okay. Perfect. So now we have uh, the critical points that corresponds to uh, this diagram, and uh, this function I will show uh, with a better thing here. And here we'd like to show uh, the uh, mandatory components on top. So this I will disable and I will enable this guy instead. Alright, 
So here we can have a look and we have indeed one maximum that lives in the predicted region. So I will uh, reduce their size. Like this. And up top, uh, we have here this minimum that is exactly on the boundary of the region. So one way to understand those mandatory um, critical points is that this kind of describes the uh, geometrical extent where the vortex will appear here. And also, uh, this can be used to enumerate the minimum number of vortices that you could get in your data. Okay, so now we we'll, uh, can uh, complete the demo by computing uh, a second realization uh, to show this. So here we'll generate a 2D view again. And we'll uh, display this guy like this. We may want to have the same camera parameters for those two views, like this, here. And uh, we will generate another realization here. So this, uh, we'll use the calculator. Realization one here. We'll take the lower bound. Plus, and here we'll take another of the random uh, numbers that we generated. We'll take uh, the uh, upper bound minus the lower bound. And here we'll have, in effect, a random value in the admissible interval. There we go. Uh, let's hide this for the moment. And here we want to have a look at the persistence of this thing. Let's move this aside. Here is a 2D view. So we'll take our calculator 2 here and we'll call uh, the persistence diagram. That's pretty much it. So uh, again, we'll show uh, the uh, axis, the bottom like this, okay, and uh, we'll enhance the uh, visu visualization of this guy. Taking the current identifier, surface, tube, like this, and we'll put this guy Gray. Then we'll take the persistence diagram again, do a threshold to get the real pairs. Minus 0 0.1. There we go. And here, these are persistence pairs. Okay, from these, what th uh, threshold are uh, the most persistent features? And uh, we can use uh, 0 0.5, 0 0.05, like we did before. And here. Right. Now we can um, call this persistence threshold. And represent the spheres, the points. I think it is something of that effect. Nope. Bigger. Yeah, probably like that. Let's have a look. Okay. And uh, put some tube here. All right. And uh, let's put five. Okay. So as you can see, uh, actually we can link uh, the two cameras to have the same uh, parameters. You can see that the uh, persistence diagram are different here. There are some extra features that don't appear here. All right. So next we want to have a look at the simplified function that corresponds to this. So for this, we'll select the persistence threshold. We'll click here and we'll uh, search for uh, the simplification. And we'll say that the domain that we want to simplify is uh, the second calculator. And the constraints that we want to use is the persistence threshold here. Click on OK. We'll uh, grab the vertex identifiers here and we'll compute. And I will hide this for a second. And we'll compute the critical points on top here. And very important, you check this box to make sure uh, that the critical points understand the simplification. There we go. And we extract some spheres. And uh, I can't remember the exact size, but they were small. 
probably smaller than this. Okay, and uh, let's put them in the uh, color, like this guy, and um, let's show the actual mandatory regions with uh, the same colors as before, which were these guys here. Let's use uh, this guy here. Okay, and here we can observe uh, that the critical points moved a bit, actually. So you can see that some critical points no longer exist here, and here uh, this critical point, for instance, is not located exactly at the same spot as, at the same spot as this guy, and here uh, they moved a bit as well, and uh, here it moved a bit to the left. But still, it lives in the mandatory uh, region that was predicted by the algorithm. Okay, so at this point, uh, if you want to, you can save uh, the state to be able to uh, run the demo again later. And that's uh, pretty much it for this uh, tutorial. Thanks for, for watching.